All right, in this video, we are looking at applying the double angle formulas. Uh, so let's actually look and see what the double angle formulas look like. So we're talking about the formulas for sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, and tangent of 2 theta. And we can basically get these by applying our sum and difference formulas, right? So for sine of u plus v, we know that that's alternating sine and cosine, but keeping the sine the same in the middle. So sine u cosine v plus cosine u sine v. So can we not write sine 2 theta as just theta plus theta? And in this case, u and v are both theta, so we wind up with sine theta cosine theta plus cosine theta sine theta. But these are the same thing, right? They're just written in a different order. So they're both still sine theta cosine theta. So you've got equals two sine theta cosine theta. So you don't have to memorize a special formula. You can actually derive it from knowing the sum and difference formulas. So what about cosine? All right, same deal here. You've got cosine u plus v, but what if we say two theta? That's just theta plus theta, right? So we wind up with cosine cosine minus sine sine or cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Well, let me ask you a question. What happens if we also use the Pythagorean identities? And we know that cosine squared theta would be one minus sine squared theta, right? So if I did that substitution there, I could also say that cosine two theta could be written as one minus sine squared minus sine squared or one minus two sine squared. Or knowing that sine squared can also be written as one minus cosine squared. I could say cosine squared minus one minus cosine squared, but that just gives me two cosine squared theta minus one. So these three could pop out depending on what you need them to be. And tangent, of course, is exactly the same thing. And so we would do two theta, that's just theta plus theta. So you end up with tan theta plus tan theta over one minus tan theta tan theta or 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. So here we have three new formulas, but as long as we know our sum and difference formulas, we can sit down and derive these in just a few seconds, okay? So here they are written out. Sine 2 theta is 2 sine cosine, and this one you're going to use quite frequently, so it tends to get stuck in your memory, as does cosine squared, or cosine 2 theta. Uh, and that's just because it's cosine squared minus sine squared. We're so used to sine squared plus cosine squared with our Pythagorean identities that when we see that minus sign in there, um, we don't know what to do. Now we know what to do. We know we can use cosine two theta. And then of course, tan two theta. Now, the double angle formulas can also be used with angles other than two theta. What if there's some other multiple of two, right? For example, what if about cosine of four theta? Well, we know we can write 4 theta, you know, if, if 4 theta equals 2 theta, right? Normally this would be 2 theta. All we did was multiply that by 2. So we're going to multiply the theta in our, in our identity by 2 as well. So that means if 4 theta equals 2 theta, we divide by 2, we get theta would be 2 theta. So that's where that 2 theta comes from. Same thing with if we, instead of doing A, if we said A equals 2 theta, then we not divide by theta, we divide by two, we get that theta equals a over two. So the theta in our formula needs to be a over two instead of just a or just theta, okay? This doesn't happen a lot, but we have to be aware that we can do that. And that's gonna pop into play, uh, particularly in our power reducing formula. You'll see that if we have to do power reducing a couple of times that sometimes we have to do things like this. So let's do an example. Say we're given sine theta equals 513 and tangent theta is less than zero. We want to find sine of 2 theta, okay? So tan theta less than zero. That means that tangent is not positive. So all students take calculus. Tangent is positive here and positive here. So that means we're either in first or second quadrant or fourth quadrant. Well, I know that sine is positive. And sine is only positive in the second quadrant. So we know we're in quadrant two, okay? So we're talking about sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. That means that our cosine is gonna be 13 squared equals five squared plus x squared, right? Pythagorean identity, Pythagorean uh, theorem. So that's 169 equals 25 plus x squared or 
x squared equals 144, therefore x equals plus or minus 12. In this case, because we're going to the left, we know that that's going to be negative 12. So if that's the case, then I know that cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore, sine 2 theta, the formula is, what was it? Do you remember? 2 sine theta cosine theta? So we multiply 2 times sine theta times cosine theta, and we get negative 120 over 169. All right. Everybody follow that. First property, our first thing is we have to figure out what quadrant we're in. We have to find our cosine, and then we actually apply the formula. Here we're given tangent theta equals negative 5 fourths, and theta is in quadrant 4. We want to find cosine 2 theta. So if we're in quadrant 4. Here's our theta. Right? Uh, we're talking about negative 5 fourths, so opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Since it's negative, we know that that's negative 5 because it's going down. Uh, we've got in this case, our, I'm going to call it x, we know that x squared equals negative 5 squared plus 4 squared. We get x squared equals 25 plus 16. x squared equals 41. Therefore, x equals plus or minus the square root of 41. Since it's a hypotenuse, we know it's going to be positive, so we're talking about positive square root of 41. So we want cosine 2 theta. We know our formula is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So we don't have those values, right? We don't know what cosine and sine are, so let's figure them out. We've got cosine theta is going to be equal to opposite, oh, adjacent over hypotenuse, so 4 over square root of 41. And I'm not going to fix that yet because I've got a square in there that will automatically take care of it. And sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So we're going to have 4 over the square root of 41 squared minus negative 5 over the square root of 41 squared. So this is going to give us 16 over 41 minus 25 over 41, which is going to give us negative 9 over 41. Now, if you want to do these uh, with your calculator, sometimes it can be, uh, it's possible to do them with your calculator, particularly when your uh, given value, your tangent theta or your cosine theta or your sine theta is in the proper quadrant. So since this is in the proper quadrant, we can actually use arctan to determine what theta is. So if we do arc tan of negative 5 fourths, we get, since I'm in radians, it's negative 0 0.896055, something like that. So if I multiply that times 2, and then take the cosine of it, I get negative 0.2195. Negative 0.2195. Well, what's negative 9 divided by 41? A different answer. Negative 0.4390. So what did I do wrong? Let's see. Did I negative... Let's get it. So we'll do arctan of negative 5 fourths and gives us that our theta is equal to negative 0.89. Multiply that times 2. That's 2 theta. And then we take the cosine of that 0.12. So cosine 2 theta is cosine squared, 16, 
minus 25, negative 9 divided by 41. Oh, well, that's all my fault. Negative 9 divided by 41 is 0.1295 R10. So that's the answer that we got. R10 of negative 5 fourths times 2 cosine of that is negative 0.2195 which is what we get. So that was just a calculator error on my part. So there's our final answer, negative nine over 41. And if you got lost in trying to figure that out, uh, how you can use your calculator to check it, we're actually gonna do that in class one day, uh, verifying our answers with calculator. So uh, if you have a question about it, of course, ask in, in class. All right, so the point though that we are here getting to is verifying identities. We wanna say, okay, can we use this information that we've just learned to simplify our identities. Because remember, the whole point of these identities is to make the left-hand side look like the right-hand side. So what we want to do is, we're going to take the left-hand side and start playing with it. So I'm going to say cosine 2x is just cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And I know that sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. And that's by uh, double angle formulas. All right. So, but what is cosine squared x minus sine squared x? Can I rewrite that as cosine x minus sine x times cosine x plus sine x? And this is 1 minus 2 sine x cosine x, and that's just factoring, right? So that's algebra. Well, notice I have that cosine x plus sine x, but I have this extra cosine x minus sine x on the bottom. So my question here is, can I rewrite this one? I know this is gonna, this is gonna be a little trippy, but uh, I wanna get rid of this, and I know that the way to do it is by changing this one into sine squared x plus cosine squared x and then minus two sine x cosine x, okay? This is just algebra. This is just rewriting one as a Pythagorean uh, using the Pythagorean theorem uh, so we can use Pythagorean. But now this makes our bottom, well, let's go cosine x minus sine x on the top, cosine x plus sine x. And then on the bottom, we're going to have sine squared x minus 2 sine x cosine x plus cosine squared x. I just rearranged it, right? But this is a perfect square trinomial, so I can factor that cosine x minus sine x cosine x plus sine, oh, I don't like that. Cosine x plus sine x over sine x minus cosine x, sine x minus cosine x. Okay, now, I don't want to do that. I actually want to rewrite this, putting the cosine squared first. And the reason being is because that'll give us the cosine minus sine x, cosine minus sine x. It'll put it in the right order without having to factor a negative one out. So then we're going to cancel that out and all we're left with is cosine x plus sine x over cosine x minus sine x. And this is all algebra. And that's where we wanted to get. Now, there were a couple of leaps of faith in there that you may not have thought to do. And that's rewriting a one in terms of sine and cosine and then factoring. 
okay? All of this just takes practice. It takes seeing these problems. Um, the more you do, the better you'll get at it. Well, I'll have some uh, handouts that we're gonna that I'll post inside of um, inside of Blackboard uh, that we'll hand out in class and that we'll work on. That is just gonna give us a lot of practice doing these identities. Okay, a lot of different types of things that we can do. Here we're asked to verify the identity sine of 3x over sine x equals 4 cosine squared x minus 1. Now, arguably, the right-hand side is more complicated than the left-hand side, but since we have an argument that has a 3 in it as opposed to just a sine x, that tends to be the side we want to deal with because we're going to use uh, some of these formulas that we've learned. So we're going to start by rewriting this as sine of 2x plus x over sine x. And this is what we're going to work with. So we're going to use a sum and difference formula. So this is going to become sine 2x cosine x plus cosine 2x sine x over sine x. But we're going to rewrite sine of 2x using double angle formulas. Same thing with cosine 2x. So we're going to have 2 sine x cosine x times cosine x plus we're going to rewrite this as cosine squared x minus sine squared x times sine x all over sine x. Now notice there's a sine x in both terms on the top. So we are going to use algebra and factor that sine x out. So we've got sine x, and then that's going to give us 2 cosine squared plus cosine squared minus sine squared all over sine x. We're going to use algebra and cancel those out. So now we've got 2 cosine squared x plus cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Well, of course, I can combine those as 3 cosine squared x uh, minus sine squared x. And that's just algebra, right? But now I'm going to use Pythagorean because I'm trying to get only cosines, but I have a sine. So I'm going to rewrite the sine squared as 1 minus cosine squared. So this gives me 3 cosine squared minus 1 plus cosine squared. And that was algebra. And then we're going to combine 4 cosine squared x minus 1 using algebra. And that's what we wanted, 4 cosine squared x minus 1. So you'll see a lot of these little tricks. And like I said, the more you do, the more you're going to see how to do them. So I, I recommend while you're working on these, particularly if you're doing the homework, uh, just make little notes. Have like a little cheat sheet. If you see this, do this. If you see this, do this, okay? Because it's going to happen that the same types of problems tend to pop up. So that's what we're going to be looking at, okay? Making sure that when they pop up, we know what to do. All right, so if you have any questions about any of these, just shoot me an email or uh, a remind or ask a question in class.